Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. We've got a lot to get to today, but we lead off with the biggest news uh, that happened just really right after we got done recording Monday's podcast, and that is that SMU has reeled in another 2024 commitment. This one coming from Bellflower, St. John Bosco offensive lineman, King Large. That's right. King Large is going to be playing offensive line for the Mustangs. Uh, He was on campus for an official visit this past weekend, along with Graham Utter, who committed over the weekend, along with Tyler Aronson, the quarterback commit in the class. And now SMU has four commitments on board for the class of 2024, which pushes the Mustangs up to the number one class in terms of average recruit rating in the AAC. For those who are wondering, it also pushes uh, them up to number five in the Pac-12, if uh, that was where SMU was being ranked as far as a uh, you know recruiting class goes, uh, fifth in the Pac-12 in terms of average recruit ranking. Um, but SMU sits um, fifth in the AAC right now. And the way that on three does it, it's averaged out. So everybody has the same number of commitments. So your quality is rewarded more so uh, than your quantity. But for SMU, they're battling right now, having a smaller class without as much um, oomph to it as maybe some of the other AAC schools that have kind of cemented their classes up to a certain level right now. So that will kind of work itself out. The algorithm sometimes can be a little interesting, but, um, you know, that average recruit ranking, which is what everybody really pays attention to, especially um, SMU is sitting pretty right there um, with that uh, with that ranking um, in the AAC. So um, King Large, what's SMU getting in him? Uh, they're getting a really mean, physical, nasty run blocker especially he's continuing to work on his pass protection skills uh but he's somebody that you know was a top performer at the uh, at the los angeles uh opening regional um where on three named him a top performer and uh cody belair uh who uh is on our rankings team assistant director of uh scouting for on three was at that camp and said this Uh, King Large was a dominant force in the one-on-one session today. He displayed excellent foot quickness and tremendous anchor ability in his pass sets. He was comfortable in stopping the bull rush when defenders used power, as well as defending the speed rush by shooting his hands early and forcing defenders around the loop. Large has a tremendous understanding of leverage, as well as individual hand usage, which will only set him up nicely in the long run at the next level. And these camps uh, that you know, we get a chance to evaluate guys at, you really see how guys stack up athletically with some of their peers. And the good thing for King Large is he comes from one of the best high school football programs in the entire country at St. John Bosco. Uh, They are routinely in the mix for and and win a national championship when it comes to, um, you know, uh, the the high school um, recruiting, you know, Uh, or not high school recruiting, but the high school rankings usually for max prep, St. John Bosco is always up there. Um, And King Large plays for that team. Uh, His coach, uh, you know, has been on record saying he's one of the best leaders they have, hard worker, great student. Um, And just talking with a couple sources, SMU really feels like they want out in a big way getting King Large. And it makes sense because he's got college ready size along the interior. He ranks as the number 47th overall interior offensive lineman. But this is somebody that picked up some really quality offers. Um, He picked up Cal last month. Uh, He had Oregon very, very early on in his process. Um, And then he's got a bunch of FBS offers and is scheduled to take a Colorado State official visit this weekend. But honestly, I would be very surprised um, if uh, if that visit happened with um, with him. you know, making his commitment, usually those things will get shut down. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, SMU really want out here uh, with with Garen Justice and their plan for development. Um, you know, King was telling me that uh, they really uh, did a nice job building a relationship quickly after SMU offered him. 
uh, during the, the spring evaluation period. They see him as a versatile player who could maybe play a little bit of right tackle, but probably ends up along that interior of the offensive line. Um, but they see him kind of like a Jalen Thomas, uh, somebody who uh, just got drafted or, well, went on to the NFL um, and and got picked up and is as versatile, you know, kind of as they come uh, with him being able to play every position on the offensive line. That's kind of how SMU sees King Large. So you get him on board alongside of Graham, alongside Graham Utter, who's really a true, I think, interior prospect. And uh, that is still uh, before you get to uh, their official visit weekend, which we're going to talk about in a little bit and, and preview that, at least where things stand right now. But uh, King Large gives SMU a second offensive lineman in this class alongside Graham Utter, who committed, you know, obviously earlier um, this week and over the weekend. And I, I think this is in a this is a really good spot for SMU to be in because with what they put together along the offensive line from a transfer edition perspective, from a high school edition perspective, remember they signed Reagan Gill, they signed Sean Scott, they signed Alex Woods in the high school ranks, but then they also brought in PJ Williams. Um, they brought in Caleb Johnson, who's still on the younger side. He's going to be a redshirt sophomore next year. Um, you have Jacob Waller, who redshirted last year and is a redshirt freshman freshman now. You have these two guys coming on board, and then that really sets you up to have nice depth long term because you have Hyron White for one more year. You're expecting Ja'Kai Clark for one more year. And then your whole – pretty much the entire, what I would project to be the early starting offensive line in 2024 would look something like, and this is without NFL defections, but you have Marcus Bryant at your left tackle. You would have Justin Osborne uh, somewhere in there. You would uh, have Ben Sparks, I would imagine. And that would be three. Um, Phelan Robinson would be a decent bet. And then you'd have PJ Williams, so you could be, after 2024, looking at replacing pretty much the entire um, – and I forgot, you have Branson Hickman in there. So, of course, he'd be in there. Um, Logan Parr is also a, a guy who would be in there. But most of that, let's just call it four of the, the five that I would kind of pencil in as, as starting offensive linemen for you in 2024, they're all going to be seniors that year. Justin Osborne, Marcus Bryant, uh, Ben Sparks, and Branson Hickman, if that's kind of how it ends up, um, and then P.J. Williams – uh, on the younger side of things, you're going to have to replace all those guys after 2024. And they're starting to stack up a lot of nice young talent to then take the next step uh, in the offensive line development. You also still have the transfer portal to address needs as you need to um, on that front. So I think Garen Justice has done a terrific job. I think he's one of the top coaches as far as development. I think he's one of the top coaches as far as knowing where he can um, not only use relationships like he did with Alex Woods, he coached his brother, um, but also where his evaluation kind of plays itself out. Because I, I think King Large is a guy, and I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he camped at SMU as well, um, but Sean Scott ends up being a guy with Power 5 attention Alex Woods, you could argue that he had that as well. You know, Reagan Gill, a little bit more so on the underrated side, but he's also brought in elite transfers. He's quietly one of the best recruiters on the staff. So as far as his um, – how how much you trust him with what he's doing with the offensive line, I think you've got to, um, you know, just ha have trust in what he's doing and kind of building up that unit. So – He's done a really nice job. I, I really like this addition as far as an interior offensive lineman for SMU. Um, I'll be interested to see where they go from here. And we'll talk about kind of maybe what's next on the offensive line as we get into the official visit um, rundown for, for who SMU is going to host this weekend. Uh, but I, I just think SMU is um, starting to get some momentum. We've talked about it a little bit. Um, they now have four commitments. And uh, the the latest one is, is certainly an all-name team. Uh, addition. So welcome King Large to uh, SMU uh, in the 2024 recruiting class. We jump into now taking a look at the official visit weekend that SMU um, is going to have. And we talked last podcast about Jonathan Agamadu out of McKinney, who 
um, depending on when you're listening to this, he's kicking off his official visit on Wednesday uh, from what he told me. And uh, it's an SMU-Oklahoma State battle with his top five of Memphis, uh, North Texas, and Missouri. I like where SMU stands a lot with him. Um, so we talked about him last podcast. He's kind of a tweener between outside linebacker, kind of rush end, and a true you know inside linebacker thumper. But he's displayed the athleticism to be able to play that inside linebacker spot. So we're not going to spend too much time on him. We covered him last podcast, but this this group that SMU is going to have on campus, and these are the guys we have confirmed right now. So maybe there's somebody who pops up late, but um, let's keep it with um, the um, the offensive the offensive line. And Brent and Wade Helton are two are, are twin brothers who play out at Corona Corona Centennial uh, High School in California, and another uh, you know high school that that routinely produces talent at a high rate um and smu is is you know right in the mix here for both of them they're getting the last official visit i would imagine before they both make decisions um they are fresh off a um they are fresh off an official visit uh to uh iowa state uh they were at arizona state earlier this month um and uh they they also have um you know a couple other schools kind of kicking the tires on them as well, trying to bring that, them in. They are a package deal. So if SMU was to get them on board, um, they also visited Oregon State. But if SMU was to get them on board, um, that would be probably it on the offensive line. That'd give you four guys. That'd give you um, uh, Wade Helton, who's an offensive tackle, about 6'5", 280. Um, and that'd give you, give you Brent Helton, another big body in the middle, I think that would really solidify things. I think SMU has the tackle positions down well for the future. You have PJ Williams, you have Sean Scott, and um, I feel like that group is going to really carry things. And you still have a guy, uh, a couple guys on the roster that can also play it that are still young enough that you're going to have depth behind those types of guys coming up. And then you can get a Wade Helton and uh, really uh, – position yourself well um to it when it comes to um the long term um the long term plan at offensive line they are going to take their SMU official visit so this is the lone non power 5 program that is in the mix for both Wade and Brent but um they really like Garen Justice and it just goes back to his ability to get in the mix as far as being a strong recruiter as far as um piecing together the relationships necessary um, to be in the mix for prospects like this. I mean, this is not an easy recruiting battle. Um, they are taking all their official visits outside the state of California, but you still maybe might expect them to either, you know, lean maybe towards an Arizona state um, or, or maybe even Iowa state, but SMU is doing a really nice job here recruiting them and they're going to get that last shot. So um, we'll see how it plays out for them on that front. But that would that would complete the offensive line class, I would think, um, if they got both of those guys on board. So we'll kind of be monitoring those guys to see how it goes. Um, as we flip over to the defensive side of the ball, which is the lion's share of of where um, SMU is bringing in um, its, its guys, um, SMU has had one of their top targets um, make a commitment. Uh, I haven't confirmed that he's not going to take his SMU official visit now, but uh, it's unlikely that I think you'd see him take that visit um, because he has made a decision. He has made a commitment, and that is Jaden Langley, uh, who is the Fort Worth Boswell defensive lineman um, in the class of 2024, uh, who committed to Arizona after his official visit this past weekend. This is a tough blow uh, for SMU. They did have him uh, as a guy they wanted to bring in for an official visit, they had him on campus for the spring game, but weren't able to, you know, get him over the hump there and get him on board. But um, Arizona wins out for Jaden Langley. Uh, so now, just like kind of last weekend, was a little bit more offensive focused in a sense, uh, especially with who they landed out of that group so far. Um, this group is more uh, defensive focused, and it is uh, pretty much, uh, yes, it is all – in the secondary uh, this weekend. So it is going to be very busy for this coaching staff uh, as they get ready to uh, really stake their claim 
uh, to a lot of the top guys they have on their board when it comes to uh, both the corner and the safety position. And we jump in with Alex Rogers, uh, the Dallas Cedar Hill prospect who is set to officially visit this weekend. He plays corner at Cedar Hill. He's had some encouraging track times, but he's also on the smaller side. He is a more of a nickel prospect for SMU. Um, and the Mustangs are looking to beat out Kansas State here um, for this one. He said that those are the two programs that have uh, been recruiting him, old SMU cornerback coach and defense coordinator Van Balone, uh, leading the way on that recruitment there. I feel like SMU is the team to beat here. I think they're going to keep him home. Um, he is kind of a sleeper guy that could play nickel and will address that position long term, I would think. Um, maybe uh, play some outside corner, maybe uh, be able to handle that as well um, if he adds some mass to him. But uh, the other one is a very well-known prospect for SMU fans, and that's William Speedy Nettles, uh, who's on the verge of a four-star grade, four on three. He's got some really nice track times. He's played both ways. He does play small school ball, so it's a little sometimes, you know, uh, intriguing to evaluate him. He's a big guy. He's about 6'1". I think he's bigger than his listed 175 just from seeing him. Uh, he's really bulked up over the last year or so. Um, but SMU is sky high, sky high on him. He's fresh off a of Purdue visit, Nebraska. Those are the programs that are heavily in the mix for him. Uh, but SMU is looking to, to get him on board. And I, I talked about him as one of the must-land prospects in this class. Um, and he still sits that way. Uh, he is really, really uh, a key piece for Ricky Hunley and, and his plan at corner. Um, and, and they've invested a lot of time recruiting him. So they need to come away with his commitment. In my opinion, it's just kind of one of those things that you'd like to see make a statement uh, about when it comes to uh, your recruiting prowess and what they're able to do. Um, they are really uh, pressing hard for Speedy Nettles. I even saw some of the coaches retweet uh, his offer um, from back in the day. SMU was his first offer and they retweeted it recently. So keeping SMU at the top of the mind there for him. Another prospect that's going to hit campus and one that I have my expectations pretty low for is Pflugerville Weiss safety Peyton Morgan. He's one of my favorite prospects in Texas this cycle. Really impressive frame, body, great kid. Um, he's just on, on the outside of being a top 100 prospect for us at on three. But Texas Tech, I think, is the one really making waves here. He's still expected as of now. It's, it's only Tuesday, but he's expected to come in for his SMU official visit this weekend. But can SMU overcome Texas Tech? They battled and battled and battled to even get an official visit. That kind of just shows me that SMU, I think, is playing a little bit from behind here. Um, and, and so you should expect the Red Raiders to land this type of a player. Um, but uh, SMU is going to get its last chance to swing away. And I, I think he would be a terrific land for SMU. So we'll see if this visit matriculates and happens. But SMU is going to take its swing at Peyton Morgan as well. They they really worked that one well to even get him onto campus um, and, you know, s allow him to hear them out and, and share what they have planned for him. Finally, Kadavian Dotson Walker, the Duncanville safety who we, we've talked a ton about, four-star prospect. SMU's taken the on three recruiting prediction machine lead with my prediction and Sam Spiegelman's prediction in uh, for SMU to land the six foot, 185 pound safety. I think he's someone that can play nickel, can play free, um, would be another statement land um, in terms of being able to beat out some power five programs, um, Oklahoma State being one of them, to land another Duncanville kid um, on this, on this, um, in this recruiting class to get a, another one uh, on the roster, I should say. Um, and Kadavian Dotson Walker is a guy that, you know, quite frankly, I could see um, making a decision before his senior season and, and maybe even soon after this official visit. So we'll kind of be monitoring him to see um, where his head is at following the visit, but he's made no secret. Um, he's been high on SMU lately, and he's somebody that has really um, been able to, uh, you know, get around SMU, I think, even a little bit more than we know about. I think he's come through with his folks um, and family, and, and you know, he, he knows, I think, where he wants to go. It's just a matter of SMU pushing it across the finish line with an official visit this weekend. So we'll be closely monitoring Kadavian Dotson Walker as well. Um, that is it on the official visitors this weekend. But I do have one more quick note on a prospect SMU is 
heavily after and uh, did, did want to pass it along. Sterling Brooks, uh, the North Crowley defensive lineman that we've talked a lot about, he is currently at uh, Houston. He heads to Kansas this weekend. He's visited Baylor and TCU as well as SMU. He's eyeing a decision before his senior season, but um, this is going to be an interesting one. I don't think he has any idea truly what he wants to do. I know TCU holds a ton of buzz, um, and I think he's a kid that re is really enjoying the process as fast and furious as it is right now, uh, but SMU is going to keep swinging away. They do have time. I would imagine Calvin Thibodeau is kicking it into overdrive with Jaden Langley uh, committed to Arizona. Now you can – uh, get him on campus since he is close by, maybe at the end of July, and take another swing at him because uh, he is so so new to this attention in this proce process um, that maybe SMU uh, just needs to kind of weather the storm here. But there are some programs that are going to swing big at him. Uh, he's been blowing up, and we'll see um, kind of how the P how how the uh, how the recruiting process goes uh, for him when it comes to. Um, his final decision, which is expected around uh, the beginning of his, senior, of his senior season. So just kind of wanted to pass that note along before we shut things down here on the pod. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this edition. Again, kind of another short one. We've been uh, rocking and rolling with news. So I've just been kind of getting these out to you um, as quickly as I can to react and share the latest. But one thing I can tell you, we are going to have our members only podcast on Wednesday. That'll go out. Um, it'll be probably late afternoon or so when it does get out, maybe in the morning, but I'm not sure just yet. Um, so look for that. It's $3 to subscribe to that portion of the YouTube channel. Um, you get an in-depth hour long podcast a week, um, and it's unfiltered, no ads during it. So, um, you get a good, just overall, um, true feel and, and kind of not as much tiptoeing around some things that are maybe on, on the pony express.com. Uh, but uh, check that out uh, if you'd like. It's been uh, a lot of fun kind of talking with different people that are now members of that community and trying to figure out how to best grow that. So I'm excited about that. Um, also, uh, we continue our, uh, or we truly begin on the podcast at least, our early season previews with Louisiana Tech on Thursday. Um, excited to uh, get uh, Matt Bellinson uh, from uh, the Rustin Leader on the pod, and we'll have uh, an in-depth chat about uh, SMU season opener, and we're working on getting the rest of the schedule preview rocking and rolling. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this edition. I'm going out to SMU football practice um, workout on uh, Thursday morning, so excited for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the podcast. We will catch you later with another edition of the podcast later this week. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.